through, wanted to touch bases with you, wanted to see how you was doing, wanted to talk a little bit about this particular industry called the cannabis industry. I was aware of a few issues that were kind of trickling down right now what we're seeing in the industry, the cannabis industry. Um, a lot of you know I'm very familiar with some things that's been going on, very familiar how this particular industry has been working. I mean, we've been very informed of what's been going on, what's been happening. We know according to this particular announcement, uh, and it's been going on for a minute, it's been little rumors and stuff, but basically the DEA announced expected soon, rumors fly. So what I mean by that, and I'm talking about this article, Ganja, uh, yeah, Ganja Panur came out with yesterday, and it was talking about the U.S. government will legalize marijuana on August 1st. Um, and this was published June 18th by a weekly paper in Santa Monica, California. And you can read the article. It was on Ganja, Ganja Panur. And what's interesting with, with this particular article, what kind of captivated me to do this particular video, was that they're talking about legalizing it within 50 states, or at least bringing it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2. All 50 states. Now, yes, this would be an opportunity for those who, you know, haven't been able to do the correct research and what, how it affects the body, what or not, and they can actually do that more intensive, boom, boom, boom. The concern I have with it, and I would love to hear your concerns too as well with this particular issue, even though how did we allow this government in the first place to legalize or illegalize <laughs> this particular plant known as the cannabis plant or the hemp plant or wherever you want to go with it. Everybody got a name for it. <laughs> but my point is to challenge you. My point is to think about some things that what is actually going to conspire. Now, recent history, we have noticed and we have seen articles with um, pharmaceutical companies coming in the game, utilizing this substance known as cannabis, building their own um, more, as they would say, patent ingredients and um, kind of taking away from the the common man, the common woman, if that makes any sense. We know this particular issue about legalizing has been very sensitive, right? I've been talking from the get-go from cannabis, you know, from Consider Group, from the from the even initial, you know, legalization that how are we allowing, why would we allow a government entity, not necessarily the government, us, the people, we're allowing these lobbyists and et cetera, et cetera. And I don't want to get into all to the legalities and all this other stuff, but it's kind of interesting how we allow them to construct these particular instruments. They talk about monopolizing. What is monopolizing? How is it affecting this society right now, even though it's going to be affecting cannabis industry right away? We're starting to see that even right now. I don't even want to be, I'm an advocate even with, uh, I'm tripping because I'm, I'm paying attention to these big companies that's coming around. And how are they blowing up so fast? That's what's tripping me out. Okay, you got the money, but where are you getting this money from? So my point, I got off track right there, but my point is this. This U.S. government is coming in the game. All they know is that it's not going to be in your hands anymore, people. They know this. It's not going to be in the common man's hands. Was it even ever in the common man's hands? Yes, it was once upon a time before legality started stepping in. And everybody talked about rules and regulations and what we got to do and how we got to do it and who's good for this and I got to teach you this way because my children are affected by this and that. And so my point is this, we have these government, federal government um, institutions coming into the game, pretty much destroying the game. Yes, I get all the, you got to have some rules, some regulations, some areas that could be very sensitive, obviously, caregivers and whatnot. But you know what really going to be sad about it? When the, and this is just a prediction. When the pharmacies and everybody come up 
and when the pharmacies take a hold of this industry, they're clearing out the dispensaries. Dispensary is going to be no longer in the game because think about it. How many people, how many of you right now shop at Walmart? You feel what I'm saying? Shop at Walmart. Now, you know, Walmart's going to be in the game. We was even discussing this a while ago about some issues with this because Walmart might even be Walgreens. You see what I'm saying? Not even knowing when you when you're looking at the track record, when you're looking at the, you know, going through the, the, the ropes and come to find out who's on the top and come to find out, oh, Walmart owns Walgreens. That might not be a coincidence. That might be a coincidence. That might not be. You know what I'm saying? But we got to start paying attention and asking the questions. They're talking about monopolizing and we're seeing monopoly going on 24-7, seven days a week. I mean, look at the great example of LinkedIn being bought by Microsoft, $26 billion. And I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's a little more, a little less. But my point is, think about all these integrations or these so-called systems coming together, taking it away from the common people, the common man. And then we have these companies that's building up. You're building these companies up. And you might have been around five, ten years maybe. But at the same time, longevity. And th this is one of the things that's kind of kind of been a passion for me because I follow I follow certain um, mentors. I follow certain business industries that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, I'm seeing something going on like what is really going on when you have two or three or five people owning all these industries. And then we're wondering why is no competition? Microsoft don't have no competition. Apple don't have no competition. Amazon don't have no competition. You feel what I'm saying? These are three entities that we know of that we use their products 24-7, seven days a week. Right? Think about it, people. And how are they ever going to be a uh, challenge or how are they ever going to be able to develop another product besides going over and buying uh, WhatsApp. I mean, Facebook. Think about it. WhatsApp. They own WhatsApp. They own Instagram. And not knocking it. My point is that how are we ever going to get any better when we're not able to develop better? If we don't know better, how are we going to perform better? Right? The challenge when you got, just like the music industry, it's only five of them. It's probably four of them now. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to get all on that. That's a different subject. But my point is this. We got to start questioning some things. We got to start questioning our own self within us, why we think these values, why we're utilizing these particular uh, issues, and why are we allowing somebody to come from outside into our states? Think about it. The union states, it used to be union states where the state knew their own state of mind. Now we're allowing, even though we've been doing this for a while, if you look back into your 1800s, they call it the Civil War, you'll see that some things was changed in the law books to affect your citizenship or affect your voting rights. So these are, the th these are some of the reasons why I don't vote. i rather write something that's compelling that will get you to stand up and ask the question. That's the point of the Consider Show, of the Consider Group, of Consider Haru. You feel what I'm saying? This is the mindset I'm looking at. I'm like, how and why are not people standing up for the cause? Your money is an indicator of where you spend it. Your money is the supporter or non-supporter. You feel what I'm saying? And if we're supporting these entities, that claiming is giving us a better experience. You feel what I'm saying? To give us a better experience. Why are we not acting accordingly? So looking at this article once again, as the DEA is talking about utilizing, taking cannabis or marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 in August, 1st of August. This is a rumor, but at the same time, usually rumors come to be true when you're looking deeper and deeper. It might not happen in this particular timeline, but eventually it's going to be happening. We've been talking about this. I've been seeing posts and whatnot articles on Schedule 1 going to Schedule 2 for the last probably six months. 
you know, but at the same time, it's an understanding of what we have to do. We have to start taking back our power as a people. You feel what I'm saying? I'm taking back my power. I don't know about you, but I'm taking back my power. I'm taking back who I am, my soul. You feel what I'm saying? I'm taking back my belief. I'm taking back my faith. I'm taking it back, even if you want to go there, religion or spirituality, I'm taking it back. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking it back to the higher one, to the pineal gland or to the psychic gland, taking it back to the heart and to all the chakras within the universal mind, body, holographic body. So my point is this. Ask the question. Why are we sitting here allowing these companies to come in, infiltrate our lives, and dictate what we do each and every day? A cell phone causing plenty of problems in the family unit. Let's keep it real. A computer causing plenty of problems in the family unit. Yes, it may make you money. It may make you prosperous. You know what I'm saying? It may make you abundant. But at the same time, when are we going to take the time to really pay attention? See what I'm saying? Pay attention. Pay attention and listen to what's actually in your heart. That's why I chose to do publishing. Information. Think about it. You have to deal with more issues as a dispensary owner than any <laughs> other part of the business model. Think about it. And as many other business models out there you can utilize. Not saying you got to go and stop what you're doing. My point is, start asking these questions. How are you going to strive? Are you going to survive? Screw surviving. How are you going to live your life being long jeopardy? Long jeopardy. I'm talking long jeopardy. Times, you know, uh, uh, Times Magazine, you know, uh, National Geographic. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking long jeopardy. I'm not talking, oh, a few years. I had my dispensary up for a few years. Then all of a sudden, you know, big corporatization came in. They called them pharmacies. You know, now they're taking over and killing the market. See, and that's what I don't get with the people. Why are we not understanding? And don't take me wrong. We might even have these avenues out there that, because I, I figure more people are trying to, the key thing is trying to connect the people than separate the people but what we're seeing more often within these particular fields especially in the cannabis field not even just the cannabis field but in the fitness field maybe in all the industries this might be a commonality but i don't see enough networking what i mean by that networking what i mean by how can we support each other's ventures where we're connecting where we're seeing elements what's going on with the schedule one to schedule two, but how they're actually going to infiltrate, orchestrate this issue. Then what's crazy about it, because then they're really going to have opportunities. The, the federal government is really going to have an opportunity to go in them states and do whatever they please. And that's what they've been doing. But we claim we're a state. We're running the show. We're a state of mind. Oh, I'm, I'm from California and I got that mindset. I'm from Colorado. I got that mindset. Representing something that really don't have nothing to do with you. Because we're all individual individuals, if that makes sense. We all individual individuals, even though we're a collective. But the problem is that the collective is not being collective. That's the key thing I'm noticing with these particular articles that's coming out. Or this particular article in general, you know. We know this is going to change the game. And what's going to be funny about it, how many dispensaries, that's the key thing, how many dispensaries are going to be around? Because most, well, most of the time I'm doing interviews with these dispensaries, and all I hear about is how they're making the money. You know, what they're doing. You know, these owners are making all this abundant money and they can't afford these particular um, particular employees. They can't pay them enough. I mean, we're talking... We're talking pet, you're talking, you're still paying people minimum wage and you're making multi-millions of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars a day. Come on, what's really going on with that? And I'm just asking the question. That's all I'm doing here is asking the question. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, how are you not, why are you not paying your employees good enough money or being able to give your customers the greatest, the best experience ever they ever had in their life? You feel what I'm saying? That's when you're going to be around for longevity, not sitting there because you're making this money and then, oh, well, I can go up and pick up and do this. See, it's about a track record. Tune in because I be aware I got a book coming out called <laughs> Show Him, Show Me Your Track Record. And that's key, key in everything. You know what I'm saying? If we're not looking at longevity, what are we looking at? If we're not looking at future, what are we looking at? Yeah, we're looking at now and all now materialistic, boom, 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 and this and that. But obviously, we're transmuting to something else. And, others are, and that's another subject matter. But at the same time, I want to hear your concerns about this certain issue. About the Schedule 1 coming to Schedule 2. How that actually going to affect you as a dispensary. And I'm talking to you, all the legalized states. Colorado, Alaska, Oregon, Washington, D.C. And who's the other one? It's another one. It's another one that is boggling my mind. Washington, D.C., Washington State, period. That's the other one. So think about this. Think about how it's going to affect you, what it's going to be doing. Because like I said before, and I asked this question before, why legalize? Why legalize? Because now, as we utilize it, and a great example, the alcohol. Now look what they did brought all the alcohol in the stores now, selling it within the stores right there so you can free for all. You obviously got to have ID and all that other fun stuff. But look how it's been regulated now and how it's been out there to be able to get with the with the uh, particular client. Go ask the um, liquor stores how, how, how much they're profiting now or if they're even profiting like they was before or prior to that issue. Now, that's just something to think about. Till next time, this is going to be on the Consider Show. Just a question or consider this. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I want to challenge all of you out there, everybody out there who's watching this video right now. Let me hear your concerns. You're always talking about this and talking about that. But at the same time, this is going to affect everybody. Regardless of how you look at it, it's going to affect everybody. So let me know. Much love. Hotel.